yes. Still on the passage that we've been on, um, Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. Said, if therefore, if a man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 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 What is the lifestyle of the new creation? What is the lifestyle of the new creation? The lifestyle of the new creation. You see, I'm just going to take it from when we look at, I'm going to refer again to Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, where it talks about, it says, and it shall come to pass that this, his body shall be taken from off thy shoulders, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And I just want to take it from there. See, the kingdom, the, 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 the kingdom lifestyle is such that everything that happens to you is really not because of you. Everything that happens to you is actually a message unto the nations. Because you are the light of the world. You see, when you see a light, a lamp stand, it gives out light. But there are a lot of things that happen that takes place within that light for it to give out light. And until we understand this, you may never know why and appreciate the reason things go on around you, with you, the way they happen, the way they do. And I'm going to take a simple thing using that passage. If we are to draw, if we are to draw a diagram, Let's say we have a square on the top. That square, you have God inside that box. Then you have two circles, one to the right of the square and another to the, to the left of the square. And on the, on, the, on the right of the square, you have there, you have there, you. And on the left of the square, I mean on the, of the circle, the circle to your left, you have somebody. And the circle to your right, you have you. Now, let's say somebody is sick. They just diagnose cancer in that person. And the person out of fear begins to cry out to God, that Lord, heal me of this cancer. Now, you see an arrow being pointed to God. That arrow is called supplication, the prayer of supplication. What God will do is that he will now yoke lay a burden on you who is, a, who is his child established in the kingdom he will not lay the burden that this person this person supplicated, heal me but because the person is praying in fear in other words does not have faith enough to carry it see God does not answer a prayer that is prayed in fear, he answers prayer that prayed in faith <laughs> so what happens is that God will raise up an intercessor by laying a burden upon somebody that he knows, knows him enough to trust him for the bringing of that healing. Now, when that burden comes upon that person, what the person begins to feel naturally is symptom of cancer. Now, that feeling is what we call yoke. So there is now an arrow between you and the person that has cancer. Now, that arrow pointing, linking you together is actually yoke. God has yoked you with the person's body or sickness or disease. The mystic, if you have not yet understood that the lifestyle of the kingdom is a lifestyle of helps, say, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. That is what that is the Lord speaking. He said, I wish above all things that you prosper 
and be in health even as your soul prospers. So if you understand this, what it means is this, that as a child of God, born again, established in the kingdom of God, walking in the righteousness of God, and in that consciousness, you are not, you are not supposed to be sick. Sickness is not for you. Because sickness was one of the old things that passed away. All things becoming new now is that you have health. Therefore, as a child of God, when you begin to have those symptoms, what you are supposed to do as a child of God, the, 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 the lifestyle of the new creation is that the person does not even think about the health. Instead, he sees it as a burden of the Lord that is being placed upon him to do what? To intercede for people, for that somebody who has cancer. So as, it begin, as you begin to intercede for the person, the Bible says that the laborer shall be the first partaker of the fruit of the vine. The evidence that the person has been healed is that this symptom disappears in your body. Once that happens, now by the time you begin to pray to God, that prayer that you are lifting to God is called the prayer of intercession. Now the prayer is too angry. You are praying to God, you are also declaring over that life that you are healed in the name of Jesus. Then you now come to, the, to that another, another knowledge or key in the kingdom lifestyle. What is it? The Bible talks about, the, Jesus was saying in Matthew chapter 16 verse 19, He said, and I will give you the, king, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So that whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you, are, you, 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 you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What does that mean? Let's link, link that with Matthew chapter 28. When you read from verse 18. He said, All authority in heaven and on earth have been given unto me. Go ye therefore and make disciples. See, that's a kingdom lifestyle. Your lifestyle is that you go and begin to appropriate the dominion that was lost in the Garden of Eden. Because in the Garden of Eden, man was created and empowered to live such a lifestyle of dominion, subduing the earth, replenishing the earth. What does it mean to replenish? In other words, if there is any decay, you are supposed to refurbish, you are supposed to... Once you, are, you appear... The place becomes replenished. It becomes nourished. It becomes enriched. And how do you do that now? In the new creation, when we are supposed to do that, by what? Multiplying ourselves or the life of God in us, in others. He said, He has committed into our hands this ministry of reconciliation to draw men back to himself. The same way he was in Christ drew, and he drew you and I into God. The same way he is now in us to do what? To, that is actually the lifestyle of the new creation. You now see that it has nothing to do with the things that we have taught. And that is why you find that you, you've been a Christian, but it's like you really can't, as, you really, you are not experiencing the benefits or the realities of the new life that you profess. Why? Because there is a lifestyle that you are not living. Now, going back to Matthew 16, 16 19, he said, Whatsoever you bind on earth, Another translation puts it this way, that whatsoever you allow on earth is what will be allowed in heaven. And whatsoever you disallow will be disallowed. There's another translation that says, whatsoever you prohibit on earth. In other words, something, a burden came on you, and you know that it has to do with sickness. If you allow it in your body, it will stay. So, you find that the lifestyle of the new creation 
is such that does not allow anything that will not give God glory. Sickness does not give God glory. Pains does not give God glory, except God is the the only glory, the only way pain will give God glory is that the pain makes you to become more like him. So, if you understand that sickness, disease does not give God glory, what, what do you do? You disallow it. And once you disallow, you disallow it, then it will be disallowed in heaven. But if you allow it in your body, then of course the heavens really have no choice but to allow it. Because it is what you say. Job chapter 22 verse 28 puts it this way. He say, you, you, you shall decide and decree a thing and it shall be established for you and the Lord will shine light on your path. So the question you want to ask yourself is, what are the things you, are, you have decided? Look at that. You see, there's an empowerment there. You say, you shall decide. You make the decision, and then you declare it. Okay, a body was placed on you, and you were yoked with somebody. What, did, what decision did you make concerning that person? Did you decide that that person should die or the person should leave? It is your decisions that will guide your decree. And it is your decree that will be established. And it is that establishment that will bring about the shining of the light of God on your path. When he say, go ye therefore, the authority that, he said, all authority has been given, both in heaven and on earth has been given unto him, but you are the one that will walk or will carry out and delegating the authority of the earth up to you. In the same way, God told Adam, the first Adam, that have dominion over every living thing. Everything in the sea, on the air, on land, everything, all created and have dominion. Subdue the earth, replenish the earth, multiply. Now, he said, though he lost it, but I have recovered it now I'm giving it to you, but even the way it's coming to you now, you are living, you are going to operate in that authority on a higher level, on a higher pedestal. Why? Because you'll be doing it as a resurrected person. Now, a, res a, res a resurrected man, let me tell you the truth, if you are living the lifestyle of the new creation, you can't be deceived. You can't be tricked. You see, when Jesus was in the flesh, the enemy came to tempt Jesus, to trick him. Because he, the, he was operating in the powers of the age to come. So with that, he flooded the devil. Now, in his resurrection life, which you and I are not supposed to be living, he can't be tempted. Do you know that? Jesus can't be tempted anymore. Now, if he can be tempted, what it means is that you have actually been empowered to live above temptation. It's just that you never knew it. And because you never knew it, you still feel that it is possible that you fall. But if you begin to walk in the reality and the consciousness and begin to practice the lifestyle of the new creation, you will be amazed that, that's why I said, there is no temptation that will come to you that has not come to a man. Say, but with every temptation, he will make a way of escape for you. So you'll be able to bear it. In other words, you can actually live above it. So the lifestyle of the new creation is such a life that is so empowered by God in his spirit through the son that it makes you a formidable fool for any power that is contrary to that of the Lord. And I pray that even as we continue in this series that the Lord will open your eyes that the Lord will empower you that the Lord will bring you 
into a place where you, be, you begin to walk in the consciousness and you make a deliberate decision to say, I'm going to live a lifestyle or the lifestyle of the new creation. And there is no going back on this all the days of your life. And as you do this, I know that by His Spirit, He will breathe on you afresh and He will place a seal on you and His hand will rest on, upon you to carry you through and to strengthen you and to see you through this work in the name of Jesus. God bless you.